Hi, I'm James from Sunbank Solar and today we're going to talk about a solar controller that many of our customers have used and uh, going to go through the programming and kind of show what it's capable of. So this is a third party controller um, known as the SR609C and um, like many products it has continually evolved over the years. Um, first thing we're going to do is show you the inside. So um, and this is with the uh, with its disconnected from power. You can take this uh, this cover off, and you can see uh, how it's hooked up. So um, what we have is here in here is pretty basic. Um, you can see this controller is actually capable of 110 volt or 220 volt a power input. This one right now is <clears throat> wired for 110 volt, and uh, which one you'll use will depend on which kind of heating element uh, you, or you're using. So 110 versus 220. Um, so this is wired with 110. You can see because there are three wires. Um, you have a uh, hot, a neutral, and a ground. Um, you have room for, for another wire on here as well uh, if you're going for a fourth. Um, and you also have the these two spots, which is uh, with the ground, is where you would hook up a heating wire, so to send power, electricity to that heating element. Um, you have here, this is called R1, that's the relay, um, which I'll talk about in just a second. And then you have your two temperature sensor inputs, T1 and T2. Uh, this one's hooked up to T1. And as you can see, to put these wires in, uh, what they actually do is you uh, screw this counterclockwise to loosen and then you can pull pull this lead out the temperature sensor cannot be wired backwards it does not have a polarity so you can uh, you can't mess that up fortunately um, when you do uh, bring that down I'll show you if you can see it's gonna be a little tricky but what's happening is that the, uh, the clamp is coming down from the top uh, and then when you tighten it up, it goes back up. So uh, important to note that when you're when you're getting those, you can kind of see that uh, when you're getting those wires in there, make sure you loosen it first. Put the lead on top of the clamp, which we'll do here because we're going to need to have a temperature sensor to show you. And then just tighten it back up and uh, make sure it's nice and tight. You can do the old pull test to make sure that it's gonna gonna stay in there Let's see yep there it is pulling on those and they're both both in there pretty firmly so that's good um, so that's kind of the nuts and bolts of of, of um, the controller and we're gonna put the cover back on um, before we power it up um, and that's for safety reasons because um, obviously if if you have this plugged in then you've got some hot um, wires exposed there and that is not super safe so here we go we'll put that back on and this one is just plugging into the wall as you'll see uh, but if you're installing any type of controller you want it to be hardwired anything uh, that's for continuous use uh, should be hardwired and not resistant not uh, not with a plug. So, as you see, um, it pops on. This one has been in, been set before, so you can see uh, it thinks that it should be sending heat to the element right now, uh, but there's no heating element wire hooked up, so we're good there. Uh, and it starts in Celsius, um, so that's probably the first thing you'll want to do, for most of our customers at least, is to switch that to Fahrenheit. Uh, so I'll show you how to do that. Um, to access the main menu, you hold down the set button and you can see these different features comes, come up. Uh, this is like a recirculation function. This is an um, AH function, which we'll, we'll talk about later. Uh, it goes with that relay that was in there. Um, let's see, over temperature, we've got some, some settings that we're really not gonna, not gonna mess with, um, which is nice until we get to unit. So the unit is Celsius Fahrenheit, tap Celsius, uh, sorry, tap set, tap it again so that it's blinking. 
change it to Fahrenheit with the up key, tap it again so it stops blinking, and then it's set to Fahrenheit. So you can always just escape back to that main menu, and we can see that 19 degrees is roughly 67 Fahrenheit. So, um, so there we are. Um, so there are a, f a few functions in here, only a couple of which we'll, we'll need to, to know about. So uh, we'll start with heating. Um, the first thing to know is there's uh, two different heating functions. There's this MH button, which is manual heating, and that's a one-time heating. So um, you know if you aren't using electricity, you're just using solar, and you want to get it up to temperature once. Uh, what that what that does is you you'll set that hit manual heating set it to let's, let's say 140 in this example um, that could be an anti legionnaires uh, function and um, you'll set that uh, and then it's you can see the manual heating is set and it's uh, it's going to heat heat the tank up to 140 uh, but you're really not going to use that that often what you're going to use more often is the timed heating. So this is what you'd use under normal operation. And there are, we're in the time heat function now. So you get into the timed heat function just by tapping set once, not holding it down, um, as that's the main function. And there are three timed heating settings. So you can see timed heating one, and the zero indicates the start time. Um, and then you have timed heating one F, which is the final time. So you can think of it like that. And then we also have time heating two start, time heating two final, time heating three start, time heating three final. So <clears throat> the way to turn these on, you know, they're in the, different people have different uh, ways they want to set this. But the reason these time heating functions exist is so that you can have your water be hot when you need it and then not have the electricity on say during the day when you want to give the solar some room to heat. So we typically recommend for people the, the kind of easiest hands off setting is to just use timed heating one and to uh, set it to be on all day um, at, a, at a, an acceptable temperature for your shower which some people is 110, some people like 120. Um, so to do that, you would set it. For, uh, you would start the time at zero 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 zero. This is military time. So you click set, and then you set your the the temperature that it'll come on at. So let's say we want to have whenever the tank temperature dips to one ten or below, let's say one eleven, this will kick on. So that's a good setting, um, and this won't be the preset setting. So you'll have to change that. Uh, but it's easy to do. You just click the set, toggle up or down, and then hit set again to go to the next parameter. So we're at 110, so that's set. Uh, that's TH1 start, so that's when the heater, the electric element comes on. Then we set TH1F, and that's when the electric heater goes off. So to set that, we would, uh, and you can see we didn't, didn't mess with this too much beforehand, but what we would do is take this up to 23 in military time is 11 o'clock and if you want to be really thorough you'd set it to 23.59 so we'll leave it at 23.16 for uh, the video's sake and then the 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 kick off temperature so this being set at 124 it says if the temperature falls to 110 kick on the electric element until the water temperature gets up to 124 um, and then turn it off again so that's a good setting for, for a lot of people. Um, and, and that's going to be a really simple, simple way. Um, it depends on your climate. Um, some people might want to just set it so that, that so that it comes on at 4am and, uh, turns off at 8am. So they have, they just want to make sure they have that morning shower covered, uh, but they want to leave it off the rest of the time to give solar some, some, some room to gain heat. Um, to turn off the other setting, so so you have that. Let's uh, let's set that. So that's TH1 final. So to go to TH2, you can see it's set, set to come on at 10 a.m. and TH2F is set to turn off at 10 a.m. So that effectively turns off that setting. So um, that's what you'll want to do if you're only using TH1. Then turn off TH2 and turn off TH3 
it's on, it turns on at 5 p.m., turns off at 5 p.m. Uh, you could also use those, you know, for example, if you wanted to have a morning shower and an evening shower time that you were sure you were going to have hot water and then kind of leave it to solar for the rest of the time, that's what you could do. Um, and, you know, that would be slightly more electric efficient than, um, say, having it on all the time, um, possibly. And again, all this depends on your consumption, the climate you're in, and kind of your personal um, considerations. So that's the timed heating function uh, that's really important. The other features, so you can always escape back out to get back to the main, the main screen. Um, the other features we'll look through here. So you hold the set button. Um, like I said, this is a recirculation function that um, that most most people won't mess with. It's a to run a recirculation pump in your house. Um, yeah, what we we'll really will do, and you can turn the beep on or off here. That's that's an important feature for some people. Um, what we'll really focus on is um, just a couple of other settings in here. Um, the main one is this AH function. And uh, this is, is really important uh, because this can run your overheat protection, um, which is a really handy thing. We have a product in the, on the Sunbank website, uh, which is a valve um, that uses the, connects the cold and the hot line in the furthest uh, sink from your water heater, like under the bathroom sink and allows the uh, pump to pump um, hot water back through your cold line to, to effectively make it a recirculation system. So um, it's, you know, it's the way to put an aftermarket recirculation system on your, on your house. And uh, the reason that is comes in handy, yes, it gives you instant hot water at the taps like you'd have in a hotel, but from a solar perspective, it also allows you to have overheat protection and freeze protection um, for any exposed plumbing, you know, between the tank and the condition space. And uh, as we always say, you know, that's the that's really the only part of the system that's susceptible to freezing. Um, so, so that's that's a good that's a good freeze protection mechanism for overheating. Uh, it basically uses your house as a radiator as a heat dump. So. Um, this AH function, uh, basically what it, what it does is the temperature sensor, uh, which is here, you can see it's all uh, coiled up. There's the actual sensor that goes in the, in the uh, thermal well. Um, this, this, this sensor can sense, obviously, the temperature in the tank. And when it gets up to, say, uh, 170 or 175, uh, because of the stratification in the tank, um, that means at the top of the tank, the temperature might be closer to, to 210. So that's a good time to turn on the overheat protection. And what it does is uh, this pump, and uh, we'll unplug this. Well, maybe we won't. We'll just uh, cheat here and take off the cover. So the R1, the relay in there, can hook up to, a, uh, to an AC-powered 110-volt pump and will power it. Um, so that it circulates water back to the water heater through the cold line. Um, and it, it can circulate that until the tank is cool enough, you know, that it's not going to blow the temperature pressure valve. So uh, the way you set this is, is, is really important. So let's see. We hold down set. So we turn AH. We hit, hit set again, turns AH on, and then to set it, let's see, all right, so it's, um, and, and we'll go through the features here, so AH is on now, we go hit, click the up, up button, it'll go to uh, this, this screen here, and that's asking you which sensor to read from. So if you have a temperature two, that calls it S2 on the screen, but we'll be temp pulling from a T1, which is the only one we have, which, which is what most people will do. Um, so that's, you set that to T, and then you have your timed, your timed functions again. So for this one, we would set it so that it's on all the time. So 
um, from zero in military time to 2359. And then what we'll have to do is go in and set the temperatures. And this is really important. So for T1, the thing about this is when we want to turn the pump on, the recirculation pump on. So click set through. And right now it's set to 104, which is not right. We would want this probably right around 170. Um, and again, that's because of the stratification in the tank. 170 in the middle of the tank uh, can mean will mean 210 at the top of the tank. So that's a really important little caveat to note. So to get this set correctly, let's say 170 there. So that's for T, T1. And again, think that's the kick on for the pump. And then T2, let's see, or T1F rather, the, the kick off for the pump. So we want it to go 20 through 59. That just means that this the controller is going to be looking for this, this scenario, this 170 degrees all day. Um, so, but then we need to set the kick off temperature. So scroll through here, change it 20 through 59. And the kickoff temperature in here is set to 113. That's that's way too low. You don't want to dissipate all your heat out of your out of your solar water heater. So uh, for this, we'll change this up, and you know you can really leave it right at the top. Let's say let's say 165, and you just want to cycle out five five degrees when it gets down to 165. It's satisfied, um, and then if it gets up to 170 again, you're having a really sunny day, and you're not consuming any hot water, then it'll just keep it right in that temperature, which is a really handy feature. So that is set. So you can see you can also do a T2 and a T3, but we won't mess with those because we just want it to be on all day. Um, going through these, uh, these features here then, uh, the only other one, uh, this is a T disinfect um, this is this is an interesting one. This controller has a function where, if it doesn't, if the water temperature in the tank doesn't get up to 140 degrees every two weeks, it will take it up there with the electric element, and it does that because of Legionnaires' disease. Uh, that's the temperature at which Legionnaires' disease is killed, and so that's the reason it does it does that. Um, <clears throat> so the only other one you would want. And I might show this in a in a different video. Uh, is the timing function? So you can actually turn on that R1 um, with just a timer, and this is a good freeze protection mechanism for the winter. So you know, on a really hard freeze nights, if you're concerned, you know, you can always let your faucet drip. Um, but even better is having this turn on for you know five minute intervals or less um, in the middle of the night just to cycle a little bit of hot water through those pipes. And again, you're only worried about the bit of pipe between the tank and the condition space, uh, but it's good to run some water through that um, so that you don't have any freeze problems um, in the attic or anything like that. So uh, it's a really handy feature for that. A lot of people don't have climates where that's an issue, um, but in case you do, it's, it's good to have that. And those are really the main features that you're gonna use. Uh, other controllers uh, that, that folks use are typically just temperature controllers that will just control the element. Um, this one does a little bit more, so wanted to show you some of the, some of the features. Thanks so much for making it through this long video.